I stood on the tripod and now this is how the tripod works. Hello folks, I hope you're all doing well. It is a lovely day. It's a bit overcast, but that's not a bad thing. And it's not a bad thing because we're heading in here. And then let's just head in here and have a look what we're going to be doing. So you might remember over the last couple of weeks, I've been doing quite a bit of work in here. We've got new beds built. They all got filled up with compost and it's looking absolutely brilliant. But there's no point in just sitting here like this. So now, today is the day we're getting the stuff planted out. So I've got some cucumbers, I've got some tomatoes and I've got some peppers as well to go out. So let me just very quickly spin you around and show you what we're going to be doing in here. So this is one of the beds on the sort of left hand side as you come in and I've laid out all the halo pots there. So we use halo pots in here and I like using them because the plant sits in the middle bit and then you've got this nice sort of trough around the outside uh, for the water to go in and they work absolutely brilliantly. And then all the way along the top here, you can see this is this is last year's system that's up here. This is paracord that's sort of tied in all the way along there. I need to take that down. I'm going to do something slightly different this year. So if we have a look up here, we've got a crop bar here. And if I move along here, I've got a crop bar here as well. So the original plan was to all the way along the side was to have the tomatoes all the way along there. But I've changed my plan. Because this paracord here, it gets, it gets a bit saggy. If it's not tied on really, really tight, which is a really difficult thing to achieve, it gets saggy and it goes a bit funny. I mean, it, it worked for what I needed it for, but we like to improve year on year. So I've got some wire. So I'm going to attach the wire here on the crop bar to the other crop bar because I don't want it sort of pushing in on the, on the, on the rim of the polytunnel there, on the loop. I don't want it pushing in there in the sort of hot wire being against the edge of the plastic. So that's what we're going to do there. And then in this gap here, in the middle, between those so, two sort of upright bars you can see there, that's where the tomatoes will go. And what we'll do is if I turn over here, you'll see a myriad of, of plants lying out, is I'm going to do the same on this side. So where the crop bar is here, and where it is over here, we'll have the wire. So we've got canes there at the moment, we'll have the wire stretched across there, the cord coming down, and then the tomatoes are going to go here. And then in and about it, so of this end, we might have the aubergines, this end we might have some, we've got two chilies in already, we might have some peppers at the front there, some cucumbers and perhaps some more peppers down here. Depends how the plants work out when we have a look at them. And speaking of the plants, let's turn around here and have a look at what we've got. So some of them are lying on the side, don't worry about that. They're going to go on the ground very, very soon. But they've almost got too big, especially the cucumbers. They've got too big to stand up by themselves. And look, you can see there's little, little mini cucumbers on them and... They look absolutely brilliant, to be fair. And this year we've used the, the Spider Farmer SF1000 grow light in the house. And I've had... It's, it's, it's been brilliant. Right? So the, the plants have gone brilliant under it. You can see how big the cucumbers are. The tomatoes are looking brilliant over there. The peppers look absolutely lovely there. They look absolutely grand. But they've almost got too big, so I was really struggling for space in the house. And it's not all been plain sailing, so... I've had some issues with some of the lower leaves and overcrowding and things going a bit a bit fuzzy and I've had to give some of them a little bit of a trim down the bottom here you can see there and there where I've cut some of the lower branches off. The ones in the basket over there are a lot bushier, a lot thicker, a lot better. But that's a lesson learnt for for next year, for having a bit more space, getting getting that airflow a lot better than it was this year. Anyway, enough of me waffling on about that. What should I do? Let me get you set up on the tripod. I'm going to get this system set up up here. I'm not sure, you don't need to see me sort of twisting wire on and stuff like that. It'd be a bit boring. But what I'll do is I'll crack on with it. I'll get it done and I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks and how it's going to work. So I'll be back with you in just a jiffy. So I'm back and here we are. This is this sort of section sort of done with the supports and whatnot. So I don't know if you can see it really very well from there and up. But what I'll do right at the very end of the video, I'll unclip it, bring you over here and show you how it looks sort of close up. So we've got the wire along the top there and we've got a paracord that sort of trails down there to the halo pots that are along the ground now these ones at the back are ever so slightly offset this year so you can see the ones i did last year's all the way over here and the problem i had there was that the plants that are sort of along the back their leaves would stick to the polytunnel and they get wet all the time and i don't want that so these ones are going to be at a sort of slight angle like that and hopefully it's going to train the plant across this way to sort of diagonal line 
and keep it away from the outer skin of the polytunnel. In theory, anyway, I've got a couple of things to show you here that I've been using. So this here, this is all of Amazon. This is two millimeter galvanized wire. This is the power cord here. Comes in a massive roll like this. You get absolutely loads of it. And because it's designed for people on parachutes, the weight, it can hold some amount of weight. I can't remember what it is because I've lost the label off the end of it, but you know, it's really super strong. And when there's loads of tomatoes on here, which there will be, there'll be millions, so loads of weight, that's gonna hold onto them, absolutely no bother. But this power cord as well, comes in all sorts of different jazzy colors. So if you wanna get purple or green or yellow or whatever for your tomatoes, it comes in all sorts of different things. I like the blue one, but you get all sorts of different ones. And then with it, I'm gonna use these funky looking little clips, but again, once we've got some plants in down here, I'll come to these at the end and show you how I'm going to do that. So I'll put all links to these down below in the description. If you want to go and click them, go and have a look. And I must say absolutely full credit to Tony C. Smith and his channel. I'll pop a wee link up there to that. And this sort of way of doing the tomato support with the paracord and the wire and stuff like that across the top was his system. And I have unashamedly stole it because it's absolutely brilliant and it worked great last year minor improvements this year to hopefully make it a little bit better anyway i suppose i should put some plants out so what i'll do is i'll get you set up to a better angle sort of down here so you can see what's going on and i'll come back to you and we'll get some of these tomatoes and cucumbers in back with you in just a jiffy and i'm back and as you can see i've been a little bit busy because i've already planted out some of these tomato plants over here i mean i'd be lying if i said it wasn't a bit of a bit of a trial run before i um before I film myself doing this one. So there's, the, there's my secrets getting out. And the other thing that happened is I very helpfully stood on the tripod and broke one of the legs here, sort of propped up against the door at the moment. And I'll show you, I'll show you the poor tripod at the end, what a state it is. I think I might need to buy a new one after this. Anyway, on to potting some tomatoes. So this one here, this is a large barred bow, which is the same as this one and this one. So the three at the front are all going to be large barred bow. And they're the ones that we got from... Um, baker creek seeds i think they were called in america so these seeds came all the way from america and we have grown them into lovely little tomato plants and they're actually looking like really strong plants the large barred ball and the three at the back it's three you can see along the back there and again at the end i'll come and grab you off the tripod as ever and show you a bit sort of closer up how everything looks the three at the back there are all sun gold so the the lovely little sort of yellowy golden colored tomatoes so we'll just tear that out and you can see by the the roots around there and they're just starting to come out the bottom these are pretty much desperate to get planted out so let's just pop that down there nice and gently and we're going to use these halo pots so the first thing i've done is i've wet the compost here because this new compost it's a bit dry it's absolutely chucking it down outside at the moment but obviously it doesn't rain inside the polytunnel and i'm just going to give it a a bit of a sort of sugarling you know just sort of like a bit like turning it like a steering wheel just to put it in there let's just get it a little bit more level it was looking a bit wonky and then i'm just gonna scoop some of the compost out the middle there and i'm going to be careful because i don't want the compost going into the sort of the trough bit that goes around the outside because it does it i mean it's not the end of the world it does get stuck in the holes that the water goes through into the bottom but we'll, we'll not worry too much about that because the water does eventually seep through. And as I say that, there's a little bit of compost just there. So I'm just going to pick it out. Right, next thing I'm going to do, pop in some of our good old friend blood fish and bone. So we're going to scooch that into the bottom there. And then I'm just going to mix it round with the trowel into that compost and then sort of like you would with any sort of pot or any outside plant and just the same make a little bit of a a sort of dent in the middle where the where the plant's going to go in so we'll pop it in there and that's sitting nicely above the ring there what i will do is later on in the season you'll see there's a lot of these lower branches that are sitting down here and down here they'll get taken off to help airflow around the plants but i'll wait till the plants have gone a bit bigger and i'll come to that much later on in the season so next up is I just need to get some compost down there and I've got this very helpful but very old looking bit of cardboard and I can't I can't remember who told me to do this but it's genius and you just pop that round there and it helps to block the outside of the halo when you want to put your compost in now this one's a bit awkward because it's got a really low branch but 
I'm just going to grab some compost here and I've got a nice big fresh bag of the Kelpie compost. Now there's a there's a lot being said about compost recently. There's a lot of videos by other YouTubers and things which have been absolutely fascinating about different composts and making your own and things like that. And I mean, making your own compost isn't something I'm particularly good at. I generally buy it in. I need to get better at it though, because I think next year, I think there's a law from what I've seen from the other videos, there's a law coming in about compost where you can't get the ones with peat in it. This one I'm using here is peat free and I always try to use the peat free one. This is from Caledonian Horticulture and it's called Kelpie Compost and it's enriched with seaweed and that's what gives it all its nutrients. So I'm just gonna very carefully take this ring off and push this down. I mean, inevitably, you do get some little bits of compost in the outer ring of the halo, but you know, that's not the end of the world. The, the water does still seep through the holes albeit a little bit slower but you know it doesn't matter and the other thing i think that's important to remember when you're potting out into these halos is to leave a good couple of centimeters between the top of the rim here and the compost because when you come to feed from the top and you pour the water in there the compost comes up and it'll eventually float over the top into the ring so you don't want that as well so always leave a good couple of centimeters maybe it's an inch from the top of the ring to where you've got the plant. So that's it, it's in and it's done. Now, if we reach up here and we grab our paracord from before, and if you bear, bear with me just a second, I'm gonna come up here to the back of the polytunnel. And you see, I should have had this prepared earlier, but I haven't. And I've got one of these little plastic clips and if I show you that quite close up, in the hinge here is where you trap the paracord and then the clip comes over and it goes around the stem of the plant. And the trick is to try and get that trapped underneath one of the branches. So let me just pop the paracord in here. Now I'm gonna pull the paracord so it's, there's a bit of tension on it down there. And I'm gonna try and trap it in the hinge and get it just below this branch. And that's it clipped on. And as simple as that, so we've got a wire on the top, paracord down, and clipped onto the plant and that plant should grow up there same as all the others they should trail up the plant so if they get a bit bushy a bit big stuff like that we can use more clips more ties stuff like that to get them tied on and absolutely full credit again to tony c smith whose idea we've stolen with the paracord and the clips and the wire along the top so that's them in just about done one more thing to tell you actually is this when we were going through our tomato plants some of them have got suckers and what they are is where you have a, a truss and the stem in the junction between the two a little bit of plant starts to grow there and you don't want that here's one here so we're going to pull out so you always want to pick them out because it's going to drain energy from the plant and we want these to grow up in a single cordon but what you can do is if you've got a decent sized one is you can pop it in a pot there this is one of the sun gold ones and that'll grow into an entirely new tomato plant. So there's every possibility I won't need this, I might give it away to somebody, but they're always useful to have because if anything ever happens to the tomato plants, you know, if I get a sudden drop in temperature, which I'm not expecting, I'm gonna have some spares ready to put out just in case. Anyway, that's this bit pretty much done with. What I'll do, I'll come over there, I'll grab you off the tripod and we'll have a look around at how all this is looking at the moment. So that's all the tomatoes planted out. Let me just spin you around very carefully here and show you how it looks. So here's the six plants that we've got planted out there. This is the one that you've just saw me doing. So you can see we've got the, the little clip here and the paracord catches in the hinge and you want that to sit just underneath one of the branches there. And the paracord runs all the way up here, right to the top here where it's sitting with the wire that we ran across there earlier on. And again, all the sort of stuff, I'll put links in the description down below so you can go and see them in the bits and pieces that we use. So if I take a step back, you can see them all there. So these three at the back here, they are sun gold. And these three at the front here are called large barred boar. Now they're a brand new variety to us. We got them from, I think I mentioned earlier on, Baker Creek Seeds in America. First time growing them. I've never seen people on YouTube growing them before, certainly in the UK. There's maybe some American videos out there with them on. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they look because on the packet, 
They look amazing, a sort of deep red colour with some dark green stripes. They look absolutely fab. So we'll see if we can make them grow. Other stuff we've got, there's our little, our little sucker that's going to grow into a beautiful sun gold tomato plant. So that's going to come home with me. And again, it's going to sit underneath that grow light. Here's our compost now, blood fish and bone that we've been using. And if I spin around, the cucumbers are going to go out next. I use a different support method with canes for the cucumbers because I don't like them going up the cordons. So I'm going to do a separate video on that, but they're going to get done next. Then we've got some outdoor tomato plants and something else that's growing in the tomatoes here as well. So they'll be getting planted out at some point soon. Maybe it's just not quite yet. Maybe it's another week or two before I put them out. The peppers are going to go out as well. And that'll be me just about done. And if I show you this here, look at this. Look, this is my poor little tripod here. And you see this leg here? This is where I've snapped it. So I was in the bed before and I took a step backwards. There it is. There's the, there's the broken bit right there. And I heard crunch. And I was like, at first I thought I'd stood on a plant pot. But I didn't. I stood on the tripod. And now this is how the tripod works. So I think... I think I might need to buy a new one. Anyway, that is me done for the day. If you want to see how things come along, if you want to see those funky tomatoes grow please consider subscribing it's absolutely free you just have to click the little button below and that's it all done or if you want to see me get a new tripod and see how that works out consider doing the same anyway thank you very much for watching folks that's me done for today and i'll see you on the next one bye for now